Morning viewers, welcome back to the channel. Sorry this video has taken some time to produce, hence no video last week. However, hopefully you will see the reason why. We tried to partner up with institutions which will help us run the on-farm trials. This year, for example, we have run a live wheat trial which investigates whether modern varieties or organic varieties offer the best potential in organic and low input systems. In addition, we partnered up with BASF as part of their real results circle. We have also documented the effect of grazing cover crops has had on yield in in-house uh, trials. However, as detailed in previous videos, we have split the farm into ultra low input regenerative versus a cover crop direct drilling conventional system. Part of the reason I've done this is to help farmers on the journey uh, avoid easy errors, which I will undoubtedly make during my personal regenerative journey. So what have we learned this year? Let's start with yield. One reason we participate in the Organic Live Wheat program is to benchmark regenerative yields against organic. Now, organic winter wheat, for example, will follow a two year fertility building lay, whereas in a regenerative system, what wheat might follow a short catch crop, defined as a short period of fast growing cover crop, like our white mustard, for example. An example of which would be our flexi wheat following a previous cereal crop. So how did our yields compare? So if we look at uh, organic versus con our 10 year conventional average versus regenerative. In winter wheat, you can see organic averages 4.2, conventional 8.1, regenerative 6.0. Spring wheat organic averages 3.4, conventional 5.3, regenerative 2.8, which we'll come back to in a minute. Uh, spring oats, which is our other uh, regenerative crop, uh, organic 4.5, conventional 5.2, regenerative 3.7. Interestingly, our conventional flexi wheat yielded 7.8 tonnes a hectare this harvest. Fundamentally, farming is a business, so we should stop comparing yield and compare margins in these different systems. I've used local benchmarking figures for the conventional comparison. So regenerative winter wheat achieved 1,280 gross margin, whereas straightforward conventional achieved a gross margin of 1786. For spring wheat, the regenerative margin was 759, whereas conventional was 1337. For spring oats, regenerative was 840, whereas conventional was 1125. To be fair to our system, we now participate in countryside stewardship so those income streams should be included in the performance of the regenerative crop where appropriate. So regenerative gross margins, including SW6 and AB14, would give a winter wheat gr gross margin of 1660, spring wheat 1139 and spring oats 1222. In summary, regenerative underperforms conventional in all but spring oats. So where does this underperformance come from and how can we improve the outcome? It is worth saying at this point, I would not recommend any arable business suddenly going input cold turkey. However, this is a farm scale experiment in regenerative practices to show what can happen not to sugarcoat the realities. We have some insights from our farm trials, which I want to share with you here. And we're going to follow this through to harvest at 22. When I was driving the combine, I was particularly struck by the yield effect different weeds were having within a field of spring wheat. The field in question is on lighter land over chalk. 
It was drilled relatively early with a Horsch Avatar on the 2nd of March at 190 kilos per hectare and followed a cover crop of sheep grazed mustard and buckwheat. Due to the low input system and the dry spring in 2021, we didn't apply a pre-emergence herbicide. We suffer from brome and creeping or Canadian thistles. These weeds have a significant effect on tiller numbers and hence yield. The two weedy red areas circled in white showed almost zero yield. However, there are adjacent areas which achieved nearly five tons per hectare. The whole field had the same herbicide and fertilizer regime. So if we use the average field yield of 3.3 tonnes a hectare versus say an average of the orange at 1.9 tonnes a hectare, these weedy areas cost 1.4 tonnes per hectare with no difference in treatment. I can recommend this little book, Weeds and What They Tell Us. It is an American written book and weed names do differ a little but it makes some interesting observations on thistles. It states, Thistles indicate a soil where insufficient rooted organic material is present. Thistles spread out in patches from wet pockets. This is something we can definitely identify with in this field. I would also say that whatever your system, your system selects for weeds. So, whereas Black grass might be the weed of the moment in a conventional system. More perennial weeds, like thistles, are more likely to occur in a low disturbance regenerative system. Now on to fungicides. As part of the Real Results program, we can spread three different fungicide programs in our trial. Blue is the farm standard, just one application of Revastar SDHI at T1. Yellow is the Agronomy Max, which was Revistar at T1 and T2 with foliar nutrition as required. In our case, potassium and sulphur were supplied by 2.5 litres per hectare of Curus. And finally, the red area, the BASF trial of Revistar at T1 and T2 with no extra foliar feed. Nothing unusual. However, during 2019, When we were establishing our Harvest 2020 crop, we suffered a clutch failure on our Coon Aero when we were blowing our all-seed rape into standing wheat. This resulted in stripes with no crop and a late flush of brome weeds which proceeded to drop their seeds. These results were seen in a 2021 crop of winter wheat. The barren strips could be seen in the ADAS Agronomics NDVI satellite images. Now, the clever people at ADAS were able to remove these less productive strips, the results being that the farm-treated average achieved 9 tonnes per hectare. The double SDHI achieved an extra 0.18, but with a standard deviation of 0.2, meaning it just failed to be significantly different. Finally, the extra micronutrients achieved an extra 0.05 tonnes on top, but again, this was not statistically significant. We can therefore conclude that the 2021, a dry year, we only needed one fungicide application. Having said that, we are growing a very resistant variety in X days. Finally, regarding nutrition. We only used 50 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, suggesting we can grow 9 tonnes per hectare of only 50 kilos of applied nitrogen. I would also refer you back to our previous video when we measured the GAI of our cover crop, indicating the cover crop was holding up to 120 kilos of nitrogen. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and hit the little bell to get updates of when our videos go live. Thank you very much. See you next time.